Welcome to my accident investigation of the Secor Rail Disaster. I chose this railway accident because I had never heard of it before and I thought it was kind of interesting that the railway staff was accused of creating the accident on purpose at first and later the staff was just charged with negligence after no evidence was found in the investigation. I felt this was a great example of people being held accountable for human factors errors that can be attributed to their working conditions at the time and the equipment they were using. So let's get into it. It's 12.30 a.m. in Pakistan, 1990. The Buhadan Zakar Express train is pulling 16 carriages with 1,008 passenger seats through dense fog. It was on a 500-mile overnight run from Moulton to Karachi. On the way to Karachi, the Budan Zakar Express train was supposed to pass through the village of Sanji, but the railroad staff incorrectly set rail points hurtling the train at 65 miles an hour into a collision with a stationary 67 car empty freight train that was not supposed to be there. The impact almost instantly destroyed the first three carriages of the Bunad Zakar Express, killing 302 passengers and injuring 700. The Sakura Rail Disaster is known as Pakistan's worst rail disaster, according to a statement from the Pakistan government and media outlets. After the government began to conduct its investigation, they were quick to blame the railway staff for the incident, even going so far as to accuse them of sabotage. The government blamed negligence by the railway staff personnel for the crash, ordering suspensions and arrests of an undisclosed number of railroad employees. Following the accusations, the railway minister Zafar Ali Lagari accepted the responsibility for the disaster and prepared for resignation, according to Deseret News. So, was this an elaborate and well-calculated scheme, as the Prime Minister of Pakistan, Benzar Bhutto, stated, or did human and outside factors contribute to the cause of this disaster? First, let's discuss the accident scene. The accident occurred in the middle of the night and in dense fog. These factors could obstruct vision and contribute to the fatigue of the railway staff. Second, let's discuss the rail points and the equipment that the railway staff uses to direct and communicate with trains. Following this incident, Pakistan has had many railway incidents and according to the Herald in 2018, are failing to meet public expectations, notably. Things like broken bathrooms, broken equipment, rusting and decrepit trains sitting on service tracks for years. The Pakistan Railway has a history of not maintaining or updating their equipment. Broken or faulty equipment could be a contributor to this incident. Finally, another similar incident in Pakistan involving the Awam Express colliding head-on with another freight train at 2 a.m. was attributed to being given the wrong signal. This was a clear human error caused by fatigue and poor communication and could be similar to the errors made with railway staff in this Sikor rail disaster. Human factors that could have contributed to this disaster include emotional motivational issues, physical limitations, sociocultural factors, perceptual errors, and cognitive errors. Historically, Pakistan's labor practices have been seen as abusive and unfair according to Human Rights Watch. Poor labor conditions can have a negative emotional and motivational impact on work performance in any profession. Work performance in a railway environment can cause communication and awareness issues that could have led to the secure rail disaster. Physical limitations could have contributed to this accident. Visual obstructions from both the dark night and dense fog could have contributed to the railway staff's awareness of where the Budan Zakar Express was and that the empty freight train was still on the tracks. Physically switching the tracks could also be difficult in the dark and fog as well. Further, the train operator of the Budan Zakar Express could have possibly avoided the crash if he or she had seen the other train on the tracks to stop in time. The Pakistan government was quick to blame staff for this incident before an investigation had really been underway. The government of Pakistan was more concerned with placing blame rather than gaining understanding of the accident's causes. Pakistan's sociocultural etiquette conforms strictly with Islamic principles and rules. Also, Pakistan 
is the sixth most populous country with a population exceeding 200 million. A strict and overpopulated region like Pakistan could have different ways of looking at and respecting human rights and the rights of their citizens leading to poor morales and feelings of insignificance in their workers. Perceptual factors, including interpretation and awareness through the senses, could have been key causes of this incident. The railway staff may have interpreted the instructions incorrectly or may not have gotten any to begin with. The freight train was not supposed to be there either and was supposed to have left already. This could be a clear example of a misinterpretation of instructions. The staff perceived the situation as clear and safe, but nonetheless, an incident did occur on disastrous levels. Misinterpreted perceptual factors could have led to cognitive distortions where the railway staff made inaccurate assumptions about the two trains and their locations before impact. These cognitive errors would include an assumption that the tracks were clear and assumptions about both the train's schedules and their locations. Additionally, training or judgment could be factors here, leading to poor decision making on the part of the railway staff. The Sakar rail disaster was the worst rail disaster in Pakistan's history. This incident has been shaded in controversy over if it was a purposeful human action or a case of human error. Considering the lack of evidence from legal investigations and the possible human errors uncovered in this accident investigation, it is likely that human factors could have potentially contributed to this incident. Human factors could have caused this disaster through emotional motivational issues, physical limitations, sociocultural factors, perceptual errors, and cognitive errors. This has been Christopher Durgan, and thank you for listening to my accident investigation of the Sakar rail disaster.